Hello and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, David Mitchell and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Sarah Milliken. We start with a round called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? David, which category would you like? Can I have finance, please? Okay, your category is finance. The answer is 175 billion. What is the question? Is it how much would I get paid if I was allowed to drink from a can of Coca-Cola on this programme? <laughs> <laughs> is it by how much has my sperm count fallen since I was 18? <laughs> I've, got, I've only got five now. <laughs> Two of them wear armbands and three of them can only swim widths. <laughs> <laughs> Is it what Stephen Hawking's squad number in his local five-a-side team? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how much did Elton John mistakenly spend on baby clothes this week? <laughs> If you include bitches, how many problems Jay-Z actually has? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what would the population of the Earth be if Jude Law had 20 penises? <laughs> Is it how much money have the Arsenal fans put up to have Adaboyor killed? <laughs> Is it how many times will Ringo Starr have to play Beatles rock band before he scores 100% on the drums? <laughs> Ringo constantly on beginner level, uh, <laughs> trying to unlock, get back. <laughs> Is it, what's the Zimbabwean version of 50 Cent called? <laughs> Is it, how many hairs you'd have to pluck from Susan Boyle's face to make her attractive? Oh. <laughs> from a woman. From a woman as well. We would never do like such a, jokes, <laughs> such hateful material. It's like a hard time job keeping up with my beard. <laughs> is it what horsepower is Jordan's vibrator? <laughs> <laughs> is it is what is the what is the government deficit for this year? Yeah, that, that, that's close enough. Uh, I, I'll give you that. You know, like, this isn't question time. The question I was looking for was how much is the country's budget deficit expected to reach oh, this year? Yeah. So well done, buddy. You. Okay. Yeah. This equation just makes it easier for you to 12% of GDP, which is the largest ever peacetime public borrowing figure and the highest figure in the G20. Politicians are now fighting over how to reduce this. Are you worried? No, and do you know what? This is, that is, the fact that it's 175 billion isn't the embarrassing thing. The embarrassing thing is that no mainstream bank would lend it to us, so we've had to borrow it all from Ocean Finance. <laughs> are we worried? We're totally screwed. I just found out today that I am being sponsored by a goat herder in Malawi. <laughs> Let's just do what everybody else does when they need money and do an insurance job. Let's burn down Birmingham, that's 20 grand. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I mean, the two options we've got, we've got 175 billion debt, the two options we'll be given are tax increases or they're going to cut public spending. We need to think outside the box. I've got a scheme to make us money, we take the Queen, we put her on the road. <laughs> We Everyone tour likes the, the queen. queen. We tour the Queen. Good evening, Norwich. Give me six. Like two <laughs> nuns in a bath. Lesbians. Thank you, Philip. It will be. <laughs> I'm, I'm more limited that she'd be like more like Top Gear Live or something that she'd go to. That's only the first of my plans. The second, <laughs> population cult. Everyone over 85 goes on total wipeout. If they make it, they live. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah, instead of instead of spending so much of our money in wars where we essentially bomb shepherds. Let's, let's pick a war with someone that we could take easily. Let's fight Spain, right? Because all our squaddies have already done the reconnaissance on holiday. <laughs> why don't we, why, look, if you want to get rid of your debt, I'm not saying that no one's thought of this, but there are companies that you just put all your gold into an envelope and you send it to them, and three weeks later, apparently a cheque comes back for the value of your gold. Surely you could do that with the nation's gold. What well, you understand about those companies is they're advertising as if people are unaware that their gold might be worth money. <laughs> so not only is gold uh, delicious and useful, but it's also <laughs> worth money. Now, the thing about gold is it is useless, but it's worth money. In fact, economists show you to how foolish economists are. They say in the depth of the recession, people will always need gold. No, people have never needed gold. <laughs> you don't need gold. Well, actually, here's a quick, yeah. quick test. A quick test, though. How, how, much, how much is a billion? 
How much is a billion? How much is a billion? It's a thousand oh, it's a lot. million. Is it? Are you sure? It depends whether yeah. you're in America or yeah. not. Yeah, well, this is the kind of thing that could be slightly important when you're working out the finances of a country. It's a thousand million in America, it's a million million if you're over here. So is it 70, yeah. is 175 million million here? Is that what you're saying? No, it's a thousand no, million here. We use the American thing. I'm just saying because we rang the Treasury just to check this, right? We asked the, we asked the guy in the Treasury, the Treasury press office, do the Treasury give figures to the British billion, which is a million million, or the American billion, which is a thousand million? Like, and the Treasury said, it's the British billion, there's no way we'd give any other figure. And we said, are you sure? So a billion is a million million. The Treasury went, I'll check. <laughs> And then, five minutes, the spokesman went away and then came back and said, yeah, uh, it's a thousand million. Uh, <laughs> that was great. You must have had a party all day. It's, it's a thousandth as bad as we thought, everyone. It's fine. Did you see this? Bank bankers have started getting bonuses again. You know, it's a little bit... It's like finding out Bin Laden got air miles for 9-11. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's a clever joke. Fine. They launched a scheme to retrain sacked bankers as teachers. This, what sort of teacher is a banker going to be? Imagine that you have 30 apples and I have no apples. Give me all the apples. <laughs> so I have all the apples. <laughs> <laughs> now I shall retire on a pension of a million apples. We <laughs> don't want bankers retrained as teachers, do we? It'll be the first time the school jumble sale has made a loss. <laughs> It'll be shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you know the, do you know the TUC are predicting riots? Yes. That's written yeah. their civil return yeah. to the riots of the 1980s, like Toxteth and Brexton, which I thought were great riots. The idea of yeah. people <laughs> rioting in their own area and destroying their own street. <laughs> yeah, I've blown up a car. Whose was it? Mine! <laughs> Right, where the rich people live. We can't. We've blown up the bus. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the death thing is serious, and I think it's only a matter of time that, you know, Africa organises a concert for us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <I> <laughs> for one would welcome uh, African people go, clicking their fingers and going, every time I click my fingers, a TV gets repossessed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> TV news, who's been confusing viewers recently? This is Darren Brown. Yes. Darren Brown, he may be <laughs> one of the world's greatest illusionists but he still can't spell the word Darren. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even a magician, is he? He's not even a good magician. We had a great magician round our way. He used to do all the kids' parties when I was wee. He could make a sausage disappear into your body. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. He made my little cousin disappear. We still don't know where she is. <laughs> Well, there was a well, reusable light flickered yeah. in the gallery again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What gets me is, is people are complaining that they were confused by Darren Brown's trick. If yeah. you're complaining that you're confused by a magic trick, you shouldn't be watching magic tricks because they are designed to confuse. <laughs> I mean, to me, that, that's the sort of news that makes me think they should cancel the X Factor, pump poison gas into all public buildings and just restart the country from scratch. <laughs> If he can actually predict the lottery, why didn't he just do it the day before, take the money, and then he doesn't have to make any more programmes? Well, I mean, obviously he can't predict the lottery. I think. <laughs> it's a trick. If he predict to predict the lottery, you say what the lottery number's going to be before the lottery numbers, yeah. not just after, which I think what he did. That's what he did, yeah. appeared on television <laughs> is the lottery numbers, and then after that, his prediction <laughs> of the lottery <laughs> The cleverest thing about that trick is the fact that he has encouraged people to describe it as <laughs> predicting the lottery, <laughs> rather than saying the lottery numbers just after the lottery. <laughs> I also find it confusing that people are surprised that his programme explaining how he did it didn't explain how he did it. <laughs> he wouldn't be a successful television magician if he told everyone how he did all his tricks. He's oh, brilliant. He's brilliant. Being able to predict stuff, though. My mother-in-law, who has a hearing aid, can tell when people's mobile phones are going to go off. And I just think it's fantastic. Sitting in a train carriage going... Your mobile will ring. <laughs> My favourite stupid thing they said, though, was various explanations. One person suggested, right, that he'd filmed all possible combinations yeah. Yeah. from the actual lottery answers. <laughs> now, there are four million possibilities. You'd be able to spot if they suddenly cut to take 13 million and 96, <laughs> and he's there looking really haggard <laughs> with a beard going, oh, only a million more takes to go. <laughs>
<laughs> and then it involves, at the, at the key second, finding the right tape. Yeah. Of all of Which one? Oh, God! <laughs> 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 I think it's impressive we managed to get this much conversation what out of a magic trick! What is it? It was just a we trick! Why are we still analyzing it? We've learned, we've learned magicians must have big beards. Because a magician with a big beard, a Gandalf or a Merlin, he fights a demon, he summons a demon, he throws lightning. A magician with a wee beard is generally going to ask you to think of a word and then reveal that he has already written down mm. the word. <laughs> You're right, Gandalf should get more shows Did in Town uh, it's, not, not, it's not what you know, it turns out for Gandalf. He's sitting at home having a fire going, <laughs> I could top this. Uh... <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Russell, David and Andy. <laughs> Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features the royal family. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry we're late. There was heavy traffic on the M4. A lorry frightened Camilla and she uh, nearly bolted. <laughs> so, oh, lovely to meet you. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? Nice chain. If I pull it, do you flush? <laughs> oh, hello, Mother. How are you? Lovely to see you. Oh, look, one black glove. Are you mourning Michael Jackson? <laughs> I just don't understand what you're doing here, Mother. I thought you were opening a letter center in Wales. I thought you'd taken the dinner. I'd, I'd cut the brake cable. Uh, oh, what have I done? Oh, face it. I'm never going to be king. What a waste. Think of all the things I could have done. Lawyer, architect, lap dancer. <laughs> she hasn't got a grey hair on her head. Oh, I wish you'd take off that bloody barrister's wig. <laughs> Maybe if I just fell on her, I could make it look like an accident. Did I say that out loud? I, th I think he's talking about me. Well, here you are, Charles. Just a little something in recognition of um, whatever it is you do. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, uh, Mother. Excuse me, I haven't brought a hanky. Uh, oh, what is it? Oh, lovely. Look, an iPod touch. Here's exactly what I wanted. Well done, Hugh. Thank you very much. Now we play a round called The Three Mocketeers. This game involves Sarah, Andy and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners are the people I judge to produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is environment. Who wants to come in on that? Andy? Now, you may be aware that there's certain light bulbs that have been banned as of last week. Obviously, cartoons are going to have to change now, because whenever they have an idea in a cartoon, don't they? A little light bulb comes up over their head. Now it's going to be a differently shaped light bulb, <laughs> and it's going to take ages to come on. <laughs> it's going to be like they've had a really crap idea. <laughs> People, we want to score the old bulbs. They'll be down on the street corner. Now, we're like, hey, what do you want? Do you want an eighth? Do you want a quarter? Do you want a gram? I want 150 watt. <laughs> Opaque. With a bayonet. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy Carson. OK, let's spin the wheel again. Subject is relationships. Sarah. Um, I've been with my boyfriend now for a few years and it's gone really well, but we started sort of spicing things up in the bedroom. We recently tried uh, dirty talk and neither of us had done it before and we're both a bit too nice and neither of us drink. It was never going to go well. <laughs> but we thought we'd give it a go and I said, well, I'll start off, you know, I'm an independent woman. Oh, I, was, I didn't do that. That'd be a really weird way of starting sex. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. Um, and I didn't really know what you're supposed to say and I just sort of went, oh, um... Uh, I've been a bad girl. Um, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and he said, apology accepted. <laughs> but recently we've had a bit more practice and he started off and he went, you've been such a bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm going to have to punch you. He's <laughs> got a bit too far there, hasn't he? <laughs> He hadn't said punch, he'd said punish, which is apparently entirely acceptable in terms of sexy lingo. <laughs> but he hadn't really thought it through, because I said, what kind of punishment did you have in mind? And he said, take the bins out. 
Thank you very much, Sarah. OK, that leads us with Russell. Let's see what you have. Spin the wheel. And it's happiness. Oh, here you go. <laughs> they look very happy. <laughs> it's amazing what can really buck you up. I was in uh, Sydney recently. I was at the zoo. And this zoo, was, it was so wonderful. This place was like, a yeah, couple of years ago, some bloke got into the lion enclosure, tried to read the Bible to a lion. They killed him. <laughs> it's a bloody long book, implying that that was the reason why they did it. <laughs> well, this is dragging. I quite agree. Can we munch him, you know? <laughs> the thing that makes me happiest in the world is, without doubt, my family, my mum in particular. Right? I did Wembley Arena, biggest gig of my life. My friend saw my mum outside the entrance to that gig, pointing at her bits as people are coming in, going, that's where the magic comes from. <laughs> now, right? That is wonderful behaviour. I've never been prouder in my life, but nobody knew she was my mum. <laughs> All they'd seen was some lovely old lady in the street declaring that she had a magic fanny. <laughs> like a weird extra from Heroes. Very clever, Sailor. <laughs> Can you do that? Thank you very much, Russell. <laughs> Adding it up at the end of that round, the points go to Andy. <laughs> The next round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of the England football team at Wembley, but what does ERWC stand for? Is it everything that Wayne Rooney can't do for himself? Eating, reading, writing, counting? <laughs> <laughs> is it England Reveal Wife Swap Club? And um, Lampard has just got Cheryl Cole. <laughs> is it England release Wayne from captivity? Yes. Is it expectations raised, woefully crushed? <laughs> What they're called. Is it eight really wants cuddle? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, that photograph, it looks like uh, Lampard has Beyonce's arse. Uh, he's <laughs> <laughs> quite the booty uh, on him, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> is it about Wayne Rooney, but is it even Ron Weasley's cuter? <laughs> on every kind of level. But you're looking at the football and going, he's quite pretty, but I prefer Ron. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it actually... Is it actually from a newspaper for dyslexics and, in fact, just reads crew? <laughs> who would... Yeah. Who would run as a business model? I'm sorry, I'm not a, one of the dragons <laughs> here. <laughs> but who would go, dragons, I've got a brilliant plan. A newspaper for dyslexics. Uh, <laughs> We just print any letters in any I order and they can just interpret way, whatever way they feel like. Uh, good news, bad news, they decide. And at, That's the the same time, at the same time, we bring out a podcast for the deaf. It's a fantastic... <laughs> I think it's multi-platform. Is it England Reach World Cup? Yes, it is, of course. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, the answer I was looking for was England reaches World Cup. England's football team beat Croatia 5-1 and secured the place of the World Cup finals in South Africa in 2010 with two games to spare. Are you happy about this? I'm delighted. There are, there are 34 teams in the World Cup and I can now support 33 of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the pub, and what was lovely about it is that everyone was like, yeah! And I was in Bristol, and this bloke went, you going to South Africa? And this bloke went, absolutely not. If I wanted to get murdered, mugged, or sexually abused, I'd go to the docks wearing a dress. <laughs> this, the sports coverage is going to be very different in South Africa, isn't it? Injury news, John Terry's been murdered, and Gary Neville was raped in his car. <laughs> The, the FIFA PlayStation game of this tournament is going to be like Grand Theft Auto, man. <laughs> Level one, kill your way to the stadium. <laughs> they blamed the wags for the 2006 yeah, World Cup. Yeah. yeah, it was nothing to do with Rooney stamping on Ronaldo's nuts. It's like, no, she kept me up all night watching Marley and me. <laughs> <laughs> respect for me. Are they that film. insatiable? It's ridiculous. Marley and me is not a good film. Yeah, You're yeah. kidding me. I'm sorry, that is a gender divide right there. Muck with the dog and the hood. That's it's got a lovely dog in it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to Cheryl Cole in the Wags, man? She used to be really attractive, and now she looks like someone's tried to clean the hair out of their bath plug using a twiglet. She went from beautiful to suddenly somebody's drawn eyes onto a snooker ball. <laughs>
Do you know what I'd like to see at this tournament? What would you like make it for me? Do you know the World Cup single? Let the football players write their own single. <laughs> Kick it in the goal! <laughs> Kick it in the goal! <laughs> their goal, not our goal! <laughs> Kick it in the goal! <laughs> The good thing about the World Cup, though, is it can bring the entire nation together, and it's really exciting. I remember the, the 1990 World Cup was my first World Cup, 10 years old. Roger Miller, 42 years old, wrinkly, scoring goals, wiggling his hips. That moment when Platt scored that goal against Belgium, I'll never forget it. Whoosh, poof, commentator, oh, my God! Our entire family are going, yes, roaring. And then this is what's wonderful about the situation. My sister, holding her rabbit, the rabbit died. <laughs> Because we were shouting so loud, you're like, yeah, yeah, but some of rabbits did. <laughs> Would I have been happier? David Platt had just killed my little sister's rabbit. Unbelievable! <laughs> Every time he was on telly, my sister, there he is, the rabbit killer. <laughs> the only thing about footballers, man, they're just so brain dead. If, if you had a footballer special of the England team on the Crystal Maze, their task would be to try and order pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I can't work the dial. I can't work the numbers. Uh, well, can I say, I, I don't know who any of the people you've been talking about are. <laughs> this just seems to be terrible news for cricket. <laughs> There's going to be a whole summer where it's going to be even harder to watch cricket. More people are going to be talking about people I've never heard of, who apparently are both billionaires and brain dead. <laughs> and I find it all deeply depressing. And the other thing is, surely now, post Credit Crunch, we hate rich people. Why, why do footballers get away with not being hated? They, they, should, they should be forced to emigrate. They should be forced to go to South Africa. It doesn't matter what they do there, but then never return. <laughs> because they've got loads of money for doing something that doesn't matter. <laughs> so, have you got. <laughs> I, I, I just say, when we're weighing of people who get paid lots of money for doing stuff that doesn't matter, we really shouldn't yeah. start too much of a witch hunt. Uh, the worthless shit we do isn't paid nearly as well as the worthless <laughs> shit they do. Oh, I, I have a, I have You've got to get into a better class of bollocks. I have a... <laughs> point out, David. Nothing matters. You know, we're essentially all highly evolved monkeys clinging to a rock that's falling through space and the rock itself is dying. <laughs> so roll down the World Cup. Yeah. <laughs> David Cameron will probably be Prime Minister during this World Cup, won't he? Which is going to be good, having to watch him pretend that he enjoys football. <laughs> With that smile on his face that Prince Philip has when he's watching Aborigines do a rain dance. <laughs> <laughs> So who's going to benefit from it? Okay. Well, the economy is going to benefit. The, going to benefit. there is actually that because tangible, spend... concrete thing. Yeah. The economy will benefit from it. The economic bonanza that, yeah. that they say will come uh, is not going to happen because there is no time to... So we sell a few pizzas and there's more booze. But it, the matches are, are at normal British times. There's no time difference. No one is going to go to work. It'll be the first <laughs> time you can actually work out how many illegal migrants there are because they'll be the only people working. <laughs> <laughs> the pause is going, we're the only ones who are keeping this ship afloat for the Rush Korea. <laughs> no, <laughs> until next Tuesday when our qualification <laughs> yeah, game is on. If thing... England pay Poland, we are genuinely fucked in yeah. this <laughs> <laughs> Okay, at the end of that round, ladies and gentlemen, the points go to Russell, David and Andy! Now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. I caught ideas for scenarios we'd love to see in the performance. Come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is lines you wouldn't hear in a horror movie. Get out of the water, quick! Is it a shark? It's Barrymore! <laughs> <laughs> I am Lucifer, Lord of the Night! And tonight I'll be singing Complicated by Avril Lavigne. <laughs> Dave, Dave, wake up. I think I can hear a noise downstairs. Wake up, wake up. Oh, hold on. No, it's just the washing machine I put it on earlier on. <laughs> <laughs> He's making a suit out of women's skin. Gok Wan has gone too far this time. <laughs> I am from Transylvania, and I will suck you dry. Oh, yes? And what about your cheeky sister? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Freddy. I think your set nav's on the blink. This is Elm Crescent. <laughs> 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 
The child is vomiting, its head is rotating, and it seems to be possessed by the devil. However, Britain's social services have visited 20 times <laughs> and they think everything's OK. <laughs> I'm here to fix the hinges. <laughs> <laughs> As a vampire, I cannot bear direct sunlight, which is why I moved to Scotland. But now I can't find any virgins. <laughs> Red rum. Red rum. Is over the last and wins the national. <laughs> From the makers of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre comes the Swindon Lawnmower Kerfuffle. <laughs> this potion that turns you from Dr. Jekyll into Mr. Hyde, it looks a lot like six cans of Stella. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away! Stay away from the castle! The cafe's overpriced and the gift shop shits! <laughs> The next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a children's TV programme. We have John Craven. If you want to see him again, press the red button. <laughs> this drawing has been sent in by Robert, age nine. That's a shit drawing, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> there are children your age in China who can make shoes. <laughs> This week's episode of Thomas the Tank Engine has been cancelled and replaced by Ronald, the replacement bus service. <laughs> no, no. No, it's not Bagpuss, but it is a dead cat I've turned into a bag. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rumour that the Teletubbies have been infiltrated by Al-Qaeda. Have you, Tinky Winky? <laughs> have you, Dipsy? <laughs> Rashid? <laughs> <laughs> and remember, while crystal meth is a lovely treat, it is very bad for your teeth. <laughs> Flob a dob a dob, said <laughs> Bill. Bloody foreigners, said Ben. <laughs> Dub-a-dub-a-dub-a-dub, said Ben, because he'd had a stroke. <laughs> and today, children, we're going to be learning where babies come from. Part one, foreplay. <laughs> this year, we're sending condoms to Africa. So just ask your mum and dad to wash a couple out and send them in. <laughs> Are your mummy and daddy out of the room? Good. Listen, you're adopted. <laughs> Next up, Sharpie and Ryan take their audition failure very badly in Columbine High School Musical. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the fourth, Gary Russell, David and Andy! <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, David Mitchell and Russell Howard. Commiserations to Frankie Moore, Hugh Dennis, and Sarah Millican. Thank you for watching. I'm Darabine. Good night.